Welcome to Dig Deep, the mining podcast. In this podcast, we go deep into mining news, hot topics, and live interviews with mining professionals and leading figures in the mining industry. Introducing your host, Rob Tyson, founder and director of Mining International and Mining International Executive, a leading global mining recruitment and headhunting agency. Mining community, welcome back to another episode of the Dig Deep the Mining Podcast. And today's guest is Molly Molly Hansucker, who who's from Hansucker Incorporated, whose whose family controls 100 percent of the Majipa Hill District, a large con, con, uh, contiguous land position located in northeast of Reno, Nevada, where their copper, silver, and gold project is comprised of extensive mineral and surface rights held by private ownership, uh, painted mining claims uh, and federal load mining claims as well. Molly is an experienced field geologist and is going to talk to us um, through her journey, through the, uh, her family business and obviously talk more about the project uh, in Nevada. So that's welcome Molly to the podcast. How are you doing Molly? Hey Rob, thanks for having me. Appreciate your time as well. So, as I obviously mentioned in the um, in the introduction, you obviously have a, a family-owned business. Um, so, I just wanted if you can just tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, your career. Uh, obviously, I mentioned that you're an experienced field geologist. So, I just wanted if you can give a little bit of content to the audience because um, we always ask the guests a little bit about their background. So, I just wondered if um, yeah, you can tell us a little bit about your career. Absolutely. I'm um, an exploration geologist based here in Nevada, and I'm actually third generation into the mining industry. Um, I work closely with my father, who's a geologist, and his mother was actually in the mining industry as well. So I kind of grew up in the mining industry, um, never really expected this to be my career path. I initially started out a uh, university to become a teacher, but the mining industry always provided us a way to be able to make money to get to pay for college. And then um, when I decided what I wanted to do for a career, I couldn't think of anything better than exploration geology. You kind of get spoiled getting to be in the field and getting to look at all the rocks. And um, little did I know that early on, I kind of discovered a passion for what I really wanted to do with my career. So I've spent the last uh, 10 or 15 years in the field, mostly in the Western US. I work on uh, dominantly early stage exploration projects. So the projects where we are staking them from ground zero, uh, going out deciding if this project even has the potential to be a mine. Um, as an exploration geologist, typically you you don't get the opportunity to walk a project forward through advancement. Usually it's a test it and move on to the next. We like to say we're trying to kill them as much as we're trying to advance them because exploration geology is absolutely a numbers game. Um, so I've worked for a variety of junior mining companies as Hunsaker Incorporated. We offer uh, explore or we offer, you know, turnkey exploration services. So I've got to work on a variety of different deposits early stage to, you know, a little bit more advanced. And then we also get to do prospecting, stake our own claims. And that's how we got the Majuba Hill project. We're the underliers. We control the private and patented ground um, underneath and over the last two years, I've really gotten the opportunity to focus on one project, which has been rare as an exploration geologist. So when Majuba Hill Copper Corp leased um, the Majuba Hill project from us, I came on full time. And that's been our focus for the last couple of years is advancing that project. Um, and it's copper. We're kind of a gold background. And so we ended up in copper working on a copper porphyry, which was a surprise to us as much as it was to anybody else because being able to work on a new copper porphyry deposit in the Western US is really rare. And so we've just been ramping up that and recently had a 43101 out on Majuba Hill Copper. And um, so we find ourselves, I find myself at this stage in my career working on an advanced stage project, which is just not a path I would have laid out for myself, but couldn't be more excited to be doing it. Yeah, um, before we speak about the company, um, you you work with your father, who's part of obviously yep. the the team. How how is that working relationship, as well as obviously being a family relationship? Um, and is he is he a mentor of yours because you're following in his footsteps? Absolutely, it's um it's a great 
family businesses are great. I'm fifth generation self-employed. So um, my family was butane dealers in Texas. So we don't, we don't really play well with others. We don't know how to, how to work for somebody else. And so um, my father always gave us the opportunity to be geologists. And it was a surprise to him when I called him one day and was like, Hey, I changed my major to geology. I'm going to be a geologist. He's like, what? Um, and then coming into the family business has been it's really fun. It's a bit of a challenge because all the family time turns into family business time because we all really like what we do. Um, my mother runs the books for the family. I've got a younger sister who has gotten really good at doing GIS. Um, so it is a full family affair. Um, and I don't think we say, and you know, my father's always told me it takes about 10 years to make a geologist. I'm just over that 10 year mark of really being a trained, educated geologist. Um, and didn't realize the built-in mentor that I've got. Um, being in a family business, we get to work on a variety of projects. We get to work on, you know, Carlin type, um, porphyries. And so getting someone to really truly be a mentor through that project has been really interesting because I get to learn firsthand. I think a lot of this industry is experience. Um, and a lot of the times we say, you know, we want a mentor and Sometimes we just want a tour guide. Sometimes we just want someone to show us, you know, how to stake a claim, how to want to run a drill program, you know, show me something you're really good at. Um, but growing up, I had a mentor in, yeah, my father and showing me, you know, how to do things, why he does things the way he does things. And then growing up in the family business, there's been a lot of exposure. I mean, my first job in college was for geologists that had been around for, you know, 30, 40 years. And growing up in Nevada, Nevada is a really tight knit um, mining community. And there's a few geologic societies that I've gotten the opportunity to work with. And so there's people that you get in contact with and mentors that um, that show you different parts of the business, but really truly getting to learn the exploration industry from Buster um, and prospecting has been a mentorship. Um, I think prospectors are few and far between nowadays and it's a it's a bit of a lonely industry and so sometimes you just want someone to at the end of the day to say like yeah you're on the right path you looked at the rocks you took some samples or um no your idea is not insane or yeah your idea is insane but that's what discovers a mine and so the mentorship and the family aspect of it um has been really valuable it's you know a family business so it's um I think it's rare that children get to see their parents as a profession you see like oh, mom and dad, you know, they go off to do this job, but to get to truly come and um, be a peer of a parent is something that a lot of people miss out on because it's not just your dad. It's, you know, a well-respected geologist. I get to see the work that he's done and geology in Nevada. I mean, you, you put a map out 20 years ago and that map will come back 25 years later and you've got to take a look at it. So I get to see the work he's done. Um, and I think Buster is, uh, he doesn't, he's, he's a very factual geologist. He doesn't, you know, as we call it blow smoke, um, and learning that I think it's more the, the, how to operate in business and how to operate, operate with integrity as a geologist is the biggest mentorship that I've taken, um, from him. And so, and being family, sometimes it comes down with some knockdown drag out fights. Um, but I'm, just I think about, I'm just about that. to ask because of the relationship, is there a lot of difference of opinions and do you have, do you have differences and or do you have arguments? Um, but do you have differences of opinions? We do. We we have differences of opinions. I mean, with geologists as it goes, you get two geologists, you've got four opinions. Um, and so there is a whole lot of um man, uh, there's a whole lot of apologizing that happens about 10 years in as a geo because you look back and you're like, I am so sorry. I don't think I was very useful the first five years. I didn't. <laughs> I made a lot of bad decisions and I think a good mentor and a good senior geologist kind of says like, okay, well, you, you can do it that way. And then there's some of letting you figure it out on your own. And there's um, some of the, you know, senior geologists. And that happens to be my father being like, that is a terrible idea. We are not doing it that way. And, and usually you figure it out for yourself. And those happened um, early on. I mean, staking claims is a, teenager soil samples early in the career. I mean, there's a lot of checking that goes on and you learn like, why does he, you know, do they think I'm bad at my job as, you know, and, and learning new skills, um, being a field, half of being a field geologist is just learning to survive. 
<laughs> you know, I yeah. think I think the biggest fight we ever had was learning to back up a trailer. And it makes me laugh because, you know, 15 years later, I can back up a trailer out of any situation. And you think that is not a skill a geologist needs. And boy, is it. <laughs> um, but the more we um, have worked together, the more we learn, you know, there are differences of opinions and that's okay. And if there's not, you know, if we're just constantly agreeing with each other, that that's where the bigger problem is. Um, but you get to learn to, you know, discuss as different people. And then sometimes you just back off or it's like, okay, you're doing, you're doing it. That is a choice. You, you have made that choice and I will be here to help you pick up the choice. And then, um, as the world evolves as geologists, I mean, I'm really fortunate, you know, Buster's kept up with the GIS and a lot of things. So we don't have a lot of the, um, you know, the typical arguments that a junior senior geologist has where I'm saying like, let's use the new computer device, you know, Buster's the one driving that. Um, and so it's really become a, a good collaborative relationship, but we definitely don't always agree. And you've got to learn that um, that's okay. That you don't always need that. Uh, approval of a father that you have to have a business partner but it boy I think we communicate more than um, any client or anybody thinks we do because with two of us in a business you've got to communicate anyways and then to maintain a relationship as father daughter and to maintain a, maintain a family relationship it's a it's a trick yeah I can imagine um so can you tell us a little bit more about Majaba Hill Copper yeah so Majaba Hill has been uh a phenomenal project. So we've um, teamed up with Dave Greenway, who's the CEO of Majuba Hill Copper Corp. They've had at least for a while. And uh, Majuba Hill is just a phenomenal project. We're about 155 miles east of Reno, um, north of a small town called Imlay. For those that are familiar with Northern Nevada, we're right off Interstate 80. And we've just released a 43101 that outlines an exploration target. And what's so unique about it is we know we can move it into an inferred resource category and we're in Nevada. You know, we've got a new copper porphyry discovery in Nevada. The jurisdiction is just phenomenal. I mean, I've spent, I'm, I'm a little bit biased. I've spent my entire career in the Western US. I always said like, oh, I'll go abroad, you know, when I need to. But when you've got a Majuba, it's really hard to say like, ah, oh, I'm going to go abroad. Um, and Majuba has been, uh, we call it, you know, we've called it in talks hidden in plain sight, because as you drive on I-80, you can see Majuba. You you look at one, you know, you come out of Love Lock and look at Stan, you know, looking at one mine and you look at another and you're like, hey, that's us over there sticking out on the freeway. You stand on top of Majuba Hill, you look up into the guts of the Florida Canyon mine. So um, it's a bit rare in that it's standing out. You talk to any Nevada geologist and they say, oh, everything's undercover these days. And that's not true. We've this um, 43101 has outlined an exploration target. And we know, you know, as it sits right now, we've got 50 to 100 million tons of copper ranging from 0.15 to 0.3 copper in the oxide resource. That's only the upper portions of this deposit. Um, and it's really, really unique in the fact that we've gotten to drill this and bring it to fruition. Um, a lot of people know Majuba Hill is a major mineral collecting site. Um, we have a heck of a time keeping mineral collectors out. I mean, we, we wish we didn't have to, but for our, you know, our cover your own butt, we've got to keep them out. Um, and everybody's known Majuba Hill for years. Every geologist talks about it. Um, but to really identify it as a copper porphyry, to be able to point it out as the right type of geology and to now have this exploration target that we think after another round of drilling or another two rounds of drilling, we can bring it in the inferred category. It's a, it's kind of a one of a kind project. Um, that the jurisdiction just makes it so ideal. Yeah. So what what would you say is, and you've mentioned some of this, but what, what would you say is sort of more valuable or unique about Majaba Hill? Yeah, it's, um, well, right now we're only modeling the copper and Majuba is definitely uh, multi-element. So we've got copper, gold, you know, silver, lead, zinc, but we're focusing on the copper because, um, that is the most economic and, um, we've all heard the statistics on copper, the amount of copper we're going to need, and it sticks out of the ground. Um, it's an open pit target. Um, Majuba was originally picked up because of the blue and green oxides that are on the surface. And there was some historic mining there. Um, so the thing that makes it most unique is that 
it's there, it's ready for the taking. It's um, the pits outcrop at the surface. We drill, you know, another eight to 20 RC holes and our pits can, you know, get larger and larger, which bumps us up into the inferred category. Um, and the biggest thing is the jurisdiction. I mean, we, Nevada is designed for mining um, with the private ground in combination with the patented ground, you know, which is controlled by the Bureau of Land Management. We are a jurisdiction that wants mining. And that makes it um, so unique is that we can um, we can advance the project forward. And the other unique thing about Majuba Hill is Dave Greenway. You know, Dave is uh, the CEO of Majuba Hill, and we've worked on a lot of exploration projects. Um, I have, and then with Buster, he's worked you know all over the world. And um, it's very rare you get someone like Dave who puts the money in the ground. So as Majuba raises money. The majority of the money, you know, goes into the ground. Obviously, there's operating expenses, but um, we've drilled every year for the last couple of years. We've drilled shallow holes in the oxide um, and porphyries are known for their big, deeper sulfide systems. And Davis said, you know, yeah, we'll raise the money. Let's drill some deep holes um, and really give us time to do geology. I mean, so many geologists drill a hole and then you don't actually get to spend time looking at the rocks or compiling data. Um, and so the jurisdiction and Dave are really the two things that makes us unique and allow Majuba to take some, you know, stepwise advances into bringing this into hopefully what will be a major producer, um, in the next, you know, decade. We, I think it will be, um, and those two in combination are really just allowing us to bring a project, um, to advancement. I mean, as I said, I'm an early stage geologist, and so it's a bit, it's a bit striking to be on an advanced stage project where you keep working. Normally you drill and it's like, well, that didn't work on to the next. And you look up and you're like, dang, I, I'm still here. We're still, do we're still doing this. I mean, it's great. And, um, but it's a, it's a bit of a shock because most exploration geos don't get to be adjacent to a discovery in their career. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, so what's Nevada like as a mining jurisdiction? I mean, some people may even say, it's it's in the top three jurisdictions in the world, or even number one. Um, what's your what's your take on it? I would I think we're number one. I think uh, Fraser Institute. I, I can't remember if it ranked us number two or number three. Um, but uh, Nevada is just the biggest thing about Nevada is that we want mining. Um, my last water truck driver on our last drill program flagged us down on the side of the road and was like. Hey, you need another water truck driver? And you're like, I absolutely do. Um, and so the jurisdiction is just, it's so friendly. We're in a mining friendly jurisdiction where people want mining. So that makes it great. Um, our holding costs are low. We pay, we pay claim fees every year. Um, the way it's structured in the U S is whether we're on a discovery or whether, you know, we're early stage, we know what our costs are going to be and the infrastructure. I mean, Nevada is phenomenal for infrastructure and Majuba is, especially unique. Um, when I turn my GPS on and I've got the radio going, I get the trucker traffic from the highway on the, on the microphone. And so you're 20 miles from uh, major transcontinental corridors. You've got interstate 80 and you've got rail lines, you've got power and water. Um, so the infrastructure at Majuba is especially unique. And then Nevada is designed for mining. I mean, the laws are literally designed to help us mine. We know where we've got to go permit wise. We know what we've got to do from day to day, you know, to keep the land. Um, and it just really makes it easy to advance a project like Majuba. We love the Bureau of Land Management. We love the government. I know there's, you know, some geos that are like, oh, the government, but we love them. They are. We love bringing them out for tours. I mean, every time we get someone out to Majuba for a tour, we spend way more time looking at the copper oxides um, than it, and kind of cram in the, the business part of it towards the end. But we love having the Bureau out there or the BLM out there. You know, they're our social license to, to do good at Majuba. And so the infrastructure is world class. I mean, we don't um, face what other countries face with nationalization. Um, and so I don't think you could be in a better jurisdiction than Nevada. What would you say some of the challenges are as, as a company um, that you would have working and mining in um, Nevada? Um, some of the challenges we routinely face is um, is either lack of knowledge or not 
not doing what's right for the project. I mean, we're allowed to operate, you know, we know um, for an exploration project, we can do five acres of disturbance under a certain level of permit. So we kind of know what's coming down the pipe and what we need um, to advance the project. And I think where a lot of us get out of line is we try to drag the project along with us. You know, we're going to start a larger permit than what we're going to need, which is a high dollar cost. I mean, if you start a permit before you need, you're spending, you know, thousands of dollars a month on permitting and that money's not going into the ground. So I think the biggest challenge in Nevada is um, you've got a lot of opportunity. You got to make sure you're doing what's right by the project. We call it, you know, letting the project lead. So rather than saying, you know, what are we doing at Majuba? You know, how do we bring this forward? What permit do we need? You know, as we've gotten this uh, exploration target out. It's like, okay, we know how we're going to explore for this project. We know how the permitting has to come along with that. Um, but you've got to have the knowledge of what goes on. Um, I mean, it would be like, I, I couldn't easily as an exploration geologist drop into another country and function well without some research um, on how their, how their laws and how the permitting works. And that's where um, I think Nevada can internationally get a bit of a bad rap because if you if you're not sure what you're doing um, and you're not sure how to do it, you can get yourself in trouble because it is so defined. So if you step out thinking, oh, I'll just go do this and ask for forgiveness, um, you can really put yourself in a in a bad spot because um, you don't want to get crossways with anybody. So letting the project lead um, and then having the knowledge of what's going on in the area will really. Um, allow you to stay out of of having issues, but if if you just come in and operate um, willy nilly, you can really get yourself in a bind. And what's the end goal of the project? And is there a legacy that you want to leave? I think the um, the end goal of the project is to, I mean, we always say to to make a significant contribution to geology. I mean, I think the obvious answer is like, let's make a mine. And let's really make some money on a mine because that would be cool. Um, and who doesn't want a mine in production? Um, but is, you know, there's two sides. As an exploration geologist, to even be adjacent to a discovery, to have a discovery like Majuba to say, um, you know, this this is what the project is. Um, Majuba is really unique for, for the geos listening. We've got um, Oligocene, Eocene, and Jurassic age dates <clears throat> at Majuba, which is so unique and rare and we've drilled a large porphyry system that um drilled into a granite diorite that we didn't know previously existed so as a geologist to get to um, contribute that to science and bring it forward and say this is a discovery um is really really fun and so it kind of makes you want to go on to the next and say let's go find another one um but also, you know, 10 years from now, driving down the road, if there's an open pit in the side and to say like, yeah, we we did that. We made that into a mine. Um, I think there's a draw there as well. Um, but I think the biggest legacy that I would like to leave is saying like, we advance that geology, um, whether it, uh, with copper where it is, I have no doubt that this will be in production in my lifetime. Um, so I think contributing to the geology and knowing that I did good science um, is really valuable. My um, We've got all the files for Majuba. Majuba is a big historic project. And my grandmother's now husband visited, visited Majuba in the 70s. And there's a letter from him. And so the legacy alone of knowing like Majuba has been here. There has been some phenomenal geologists out at Majuba. Um, knowing that I got the opportunity to work on it and to be able to say, I did some good geology, here's what I think, and here's a resource. Um, for someone so early in their career, having that legacy is is pretty cool. Yeah, certainly. And uh, concluding, what's the outlook for the sort of next six to 12 months? Um, and is there anything else you'd like to add uh, to our listening audience? Yeah, the next six to 12 months for us look like um, drilling. I mean, we've got, we're raising some money and we are going to um, put some holes in this oxide resource. This is the first time with this 40 through 101. That's what we spent the last six months like working on is um, we've got some pits defined that are not um, exploration geologists back at the envelope calculation pits. Um, they are 40 through 101, you know, resource engineering pits. And so to get to put some oxide holes 
um, in that is going to be a blast. I um, I can't wait to have a rig. Um, and so we're going to put some holes in the oxide resource. Um, we're going to step out and put a few holes in the bigger porphyry target. Majuba's got a ton of targets um, out outlying of where the main resource is. So we're going to kind of get to do a two track and address both those. So um, the next six to 12 months, we will drill more. And then once we've got those holes in, we'll, we'll do another resource, hopefully bumping us up into the inferred category. Um, and in the meantime, till a rig shows up, I get to do what an exploration geologist does best, which is look at the outside targets, do the mapping. Um, so we're really looking forward to what, what Majuba's got going forward. Our, what, what something, what we say is, you know, Majuba always produces is most of the holes that we drill have copper in them. Every soil sample we've ever taken has copper in it. So getting to bring that forward, um, not as strictly an exploration geologist saying, oh, oh, I hope, I think, but with this resource and the pits behind us is really fun. Um, so that'll be our focus for the next six to 12 months. And um, I think the big takeaway is um, keep an eye on Majuba. It, it'll be really fun to see how it goes forward. I think with the way the copper markets are um, over the next you know, year to five years, it's going to be really really interesting to see how this comes on as the demand for copper goes up, ideally as copper prices go up. Um, and as we get to address the large porphyry system, it's a big system. We've only spent, you know, a little bit of time in the stamp and um, where all the drilling is. And, and so having, um, getting to do it on, on something we own, I mean, Buster and I like geology. We really like doing projects for people, but when you're the underlier on it too, uh, it adds a whole level of of buy-in, of having your skin in the game and really wanting to make this go forward. So we're looking forward to doing that. And um, Dave has always provided the vehicle to do that. And so I think it'll be a really interesting next six months as we continue to grow this resource. Yeah, Molly, thank you for your time and uh, appreciating you uh, providing our audience with um, an update on uh, Majaba Hill. And, um, and obviously I can see your passion um, and especially being a family business and uh, really hope you uh, succeed in a, uh, achieving what you want to get out of this project if our audience wants to reach out to you if they have any questions if they want to follow obviously your story um how can they go about doing that what social media platforms are you on yeah absolutely um we've got a website majuba hill copper corp um and that gets you to watching majuba hill and then um my social media i uh, search molly hunsaker and um keep an eye on us there sometimes we go the underground at Majuba is really cool. Sometimes we get some posts of that. So um, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, um, follow us. We love to share our story and um, and our contact information is on Majuba Hill Copper Corp. And if you're ever in Northern Nevada, we love showing it off. Yeah, pop in, uh, pop in and see the team there. So I really appreciate your time and all the best for, for, the, uh, for the year, remainder of this year, going into next year. Uh, and perhaps you can come on sometime next year and give us an update on the project fabulous thank you so much yeah no worries thank you for listening i hope you enjoyed the episode as always can you please appreciate uh if you can share this episode amongst others within the industry um not just everyone in in the us and and uh, northern america but everywhere around the world um and also just share the episode to people outside of the mining industry because Again, as I always say, we need to improve the, the image and the brand of mining. So I um, appreciate if you can share it to people outside of the mining industry as well. So appreciate you uh, for listening. And until next time, happy mining. Thank you for listening. Remember to reach out to Rob via the show notes and be sure to subscribe and leave a review. Until next time, happy mining, helping each other to improve the mining industry.